Hello and welcome to Tech Time Live. My name is Jonathan Ott, and I'm proud to be the Digital Marketing Specialist for BEA. With me today is Jacob DiBattista, Technical Service Specialist at BEA. Today's topic will be the BEA Universal Remote Control. BEA's Universal Remote Control, part number 10 remote, assists in the adjustment of BEA sensors. Topics covered include history of the Universal Remote and its versions, checking the battery, understanding the buttons, LED light sequences, unlocking and locking, and how to program and delete an access code. Let's take it over to Jake and get things started. Welcome everyone to Tech Time Live. This is Jake with BEA Tech Support, filming here from my garage. And we are gonna be doing a Tech Time Live today based on the BEA Universal Remote. Now we already did this once before, but we're gonna make it a little bit different. I have in my possession today, all three remotes that we've had throughout time, starting with the old remote, the mid-tier remote, and now we have a new one. I'll be going over some of the structural differences, how to program, and a little bit of tech advice when handling them. So we're gonna skip right to the next part of showing all three side by side. So here's all three remotes side by side. This is the older style, mid-tier, and this is the one that we've just introduced recently. Now the old style does not come with that BEA sticker. I put that there just for reference. Let's go over just a little tech tip I wanna go over before we actually talk about the structural differences. Inside of each remote is two AAA batteries. Now, if you have a situation where you're out in the field and your remote has stopped working, simply one of the first things we check, are your batteries okay? You may come across a situation where you put this remote inside of your bag and the button is just constantly being held like this because of something like a hammer or one of your screwdrivers is pressing against it, take out the batteries before you put it in your bag. That'll save you a lot of trouble in the future. That out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the structural differences. So you'll see this remote is totally different than what we have now. We have, these are about the same as the mid-tier remote. They're in the same position. This is a little bit more off center with the plus minus unlock lock and question. And then we have the numbers and stuff at the top. You can tell it's more of an old style version, especially if you have this on the back. The old style came with this universal remote control guide where it kind of gave you some little tech tips on different sensors. That's an antique if you still have one of these in your bag. The mid-tier remote, you'll see that one of the biggest differences is now we have a QR code on the bottom and we have colors. Now, for those who may be colorblind because there are some texts out there that can't decipher between each color, we have dots. So if you look very closely right above these colors, there's one dot, two dots, three dots, and four. So if someone has trouble deciding what color that we're supposed to be pressing, we do give help with these dots. So if you have to hit the green, hit the, hit the button with the three dots above. So that's just a little bit of more guidance right there. Now, on the remote, each button does different things. So the ramp, we call this the ramp on the top left here, that's field size on a Falcon, or that might be object type for a wide scan. So it's a little different depending on the sensor. That's why in this presentation, we're not really gonna go over what does each button do, but how do you program them and how does it work with the user's guide? Right here is a new style remote. So check this out. Everything is different. The size of the buttons, the colors are on the top, the magic wand symbol is now on the very top, and the layout on the bottom is different as well. So if you're gonna give, give us a tech call and you're gonna be using this remote for sensors, because I do wanna say one more time, all three remotes, they all work with every single sensor, except if you have to use the colors, you have to use the newer style. But if you're gonna give us a call and you're using these remotes, make sure to let us know, are your colors on the bottom or are they on the top? And that'll give us kind of a better guide as to tell you what, but what button you have to press. They're all triple A, like I said, each and every single one. And if you've noticed already, the QR codes on the back on this remote. 
for a quick example, we're going to show using the QR code. So you have your camera app open and we have the QR code. If you scan, you're going to see on the screen, it says BEASensors.com. Click on it. And there you are straight to the universal remote section where you can get all the downloads that you need right there. Downloads, BEA universal remote control user guide. Structural differences, done. I said before that the buttons differ per sensor, but just to give like a general overall of what they're mostly used for, generally what these buttons at the bottom are, if you're working with a typical radar sensor, that we call this the shaky box right here at the bottom right. It's a square with brackets on each side. That's your vehicle filter or your immunity filter. And that'll tell you like how big of an object do you want or what, how much immunity do you want against environmental disturbance? Like, rain, maybe even snow, or if there's trash blowing in the wind. And same with this little ghost button here. And that's really a lot for infrared sensors too, like an IS-40, where the infrared, you can set the immunity on that as well. We have a little camera here at the bottom right. That's called auto presence learn time. So if I was to sit a garbage can in front of this door for X amount of seconds, let's say 30, the Ixio will keep that door open for 30 seconds and then drop the, de the detection, let, counting it as part of the environment so it's not something that's supposed to be keeping it open. We have the two directional arrow. That's generally like, do I have to go towards the sensor or away from it or from any direction? The timer down here is usually like a timer of how long do I want that relay to hold for? And that varies per sensor, like I said, but as just the general overview, that's usually what that is for a radar sensor, for example. The numbers, that's how you set your value. F1 and F2, that has different meanings across the board. For example, with a wide scan, when you're doing a teach-in, that's a left teach-in, that's a right teach-in. Or for a bodyguard, that could be, is it a new style or is it old style with lockout? And you'll understand that if you work with the bodyguards. The magic wand symbol at the top, that's, there's two meanings for this, teach-in and factory reset. Teach-in is getting the sensor to remember what's in the environment, kind of like taking a reference picture and then use that as a reference for if I go in this field, I'm not part of the environment that it's usually used to seeing and it's gonna send the detection. Factory reset, self-explanatory, goes back to factory default. Last but not least, we have the colors. This is per sensor. So let's take a wide scan, for example. The blue stands for pull cord. Red is safety, green is motion, yellow is presence. Where that might mean something else on something like a flat scan 3D. The blue button is what we use for the flat scan 3D. For information on what all of these do, make sure to check the respective user's guide. You can find it on BEASensors.com. If you type in the sensor you have in the search bar, look for the download section. You'll find the user's guide, the cut sheet, and any information that you might need, as well as info on the plus and minus. For example, if you are doing a field size adjustment, let's take the H100, for example. If you do unlock, and then you hit something like A for width, you can hit plus or minus to increment, increase the increment based on what the user's guide says. So maybe like 0.1 meters or a full meter, whatever the sensor qualifies for with that plus and minus, that's how much it's going to increase instead of let have them do, for example, unlock A for width. And if it's in inches, if you want 80 inches, you do 0, 080. 0. You could do unlock A for width hit the plus sign, and it's gonna increase that increment by however much that that sensor does. But that's a basic overview of the buttons. Refer, refer to the respective user's guide for the sensor you're working on. And if, that, if you need more additional help after that, call tech support. I'm gonna be using the newer remote control for a reference of how to program something like an Ixio. To begin programming, we're gonna be starting with the new universal remote in the Ixio. The first thing you do to start programming for every sensor is unlock. So you're gonna hit unlock. 
the screen of the XCO shows an unlock symbol. And if you look underneath, there is a red flashing LED. For every button press that you make, you wanna make sure that that LED changes its tone, its pace. Let's say we're gonna change the field size on the XCO on the remote. That's the wedge, the little right angle triangle right there. We call it a ramp. When you hit it, watch the LED. It goes rapid. It's gonna go much faster. And the XCO actually shows the settings that you're changing. So you're gonna see a ramp there. If you don't know what it's set to, hit the question mark in the middle and it's gonna show green LEDs. Count how many there are. So there was zero because I have it set to zero right now. Lock, lock. Now let's change it to five. Unlock, red LED slow. Wedge, red LED is faster. Five. The red LED reacted, it went slower. Field size is set to five. Always end it with lock, lock. So now let's question the setting. Unlock, wedge, question mark, count the green. One, two, three, four, five. Ramp is set to five. Now we do lock, lock. Now you may come across a situation where the sensor has an access code. What you wanna do in that case is if you don't know the access code, you recycle the power. So we're gonna unplug the XCO, plug it back in. Air set up. By the time that you cycle the power on the sensor, you have 60 seconds to do your commands or to take out the access code. Here's how you take it away if you don't know what it is. Unlock once, lock it once. Hit the number zero four times. One, two, three, four. LED goes out and you go back to the main screen. You may now program anything you want. Here's how you program an access code. It's the same exact thing, just minus taking away the power. Unlock, hit the lock button once. Let's say you wanna set it to one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. LED goes out. So now when I try to program, it may not let me go in. So you saw it let me because of that minute, but we're gonna let a minute pass now and show you what happens when I don't know what the, the user code is. Before, when I would unlock the sensor, it would just flash slow. Now that we've waited a bit of time and the access code is saved in after the 60 seconds has recycled, watch this, unlock. Straight to a red rapid flashing LED. If I try to hit that ramp, nothing happens. Now, here's what to do if you do know the access code. We set it to one, two, three, four. Now, to remove that access code when you know it, hit unlock. One, two, three, four. We're in. Now, I'll just hit ramp. Eight. Lock, lock. So, if you know it, you just hit unlock your four digit code and you're in. If you don't know it, cycle the power. Hit unlock, lock, and zero four times. And that's an access code. Okay, now let's say you wanna remove the access code, but you do know what the code is. Hit unlock, do your one, two, three, four. So you're entering your admin code. And then same process before, lock once, zero four times. So one, two, three, four, access code is gone. For this part of the remote section, you're gonna, we're gonna show you the difference between the range of the mid-tier remote versus the new remote. So we're gonna show you how much more advanced that this remote is. So just for a little bit of reference from where I'm standing, I'd say it's about a good seven feet away from the door. And I'm just gonna keep going back and back more. I'm gonna show you where this stops and where this stops with the range. So right now, if I unlock, LED's flashing, it did take the signal out. If I step back here, still going, still going, still going. Okay, so right about here is the cutoff. 
I would say that that's a good, probably, I'd say it's about 20 feet, just to give you an accurate reading. Now I'm gonna show you how much more further back that this remote can go. So good. Still going. Still good. So as you can see, the new remote has probably doubled or tripled the distance. For what you saw was at the end of my car here, I went all the way back over to that street and it was still detecting. So this remote is much more advanced. Now, the one thing you wanna be careful of is let's say you have two industrial doors side by side. When you're unlocking one sensor, let's say a Falcon, and you press unlock, both sensors could blink. You want to make sure that you go to the sensor if that happens that you don't want to program and press lock lock on it or that's where the access code comes in handy because if you put an access code on one and not the other that long range won't matter you're only programming one we're going to be doing more tech time lives per month so make sure to stay tuned until then we'll see you next time Thank you everyone for watching this Tech Time Live. Today we went over the BEA Universal Remote Control. We covered the history of the remote, checking the batteries, understanding the buttons, LED light sequences, unlocking and locking, and how to program and delete an access code. For more Tech Time Live videos, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash BEA Sensors. Also be sure to visit our website at www.beasensors.com. Thank you for watching and have a great day.